Hi, this is Debbie from Lime Doodle Design and today for my Doodling with Debbie feature, I'm being inspired by the fabulous Christina Werner and her recent Distress Oxide Colour Combinations series. I've been following Christina since way back in the day and I'm always inspired by her cards as well as her graphic design work and lettering. Well, when I saw Christina combine old paper, evergreen bow and black soot Distress Oxides, I just couldn't get the beautiful muted blend of these colours out of my head. So I'll be using them on my card today. Please check out Christina's series as she covers lots of other different combinations too. So I'm starting out with the three colours of Distress Oxide ink and a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound card cut to six inches square. For the blending, I'll be using the largest of my Picket Fence blending brushes. I'm still loving these brushes for getting a really nice smooth blend. And then starting with the old paper Distress Oxide and I'm blending this over roughly half of the card. This will allow for an area of pure old paper at the top of the panel and then an area to blend with the evergreen bow through the middle section. So as I work the evergreen bow through the middle, I'm concentrating on getting a smooth blend with the transition from old paper and also bringing the colour down towards the bottom of the panel so that I will have an area to blend with the black soot. Black soot is a concentrated colour and you don't need much on your brush to get a good coverage. As you can see here, the Distress Oxides blend beautifully and you can work the blend for a while after the initial application. You can see that I missed a spot where the tissue I'd been using to protect the panel from fingerprints got in the way, but it was easy to keep blending the colours over this section until you wouldn't know where there had been a defined edge of the colour in that area. I use baby wipes to clean my glass mat of excess ink and prevent ink from being blended into the wrong section. And I also use baby wipes to clean my brush when moving from darker to lighter colours. I rub the brush head over a baby wipe several times and then I rub it over a dry tissue to remove any moisture. And then I'm set to go again. If I left the remains of the black soot on the brush as I worked more evergreen bow into the transition, then the black soot would likely have overpowered the evergreen bow but with the clean brush, I'm able to apply more of the evergreen bow to blend the transition and even out the colour as I'd like it to be. I repeated the cleaning process to remove the evergreen bow ink before returning to the old paper ink to really work the colours over those transition areas. And once I'd finished really giving a good coating of the old paper to the top of the panel, I was happy with the overall blending of colours from one to another. I'm going to use the centre cut heart background stamp from Simsa Stamp and white heat embossed the design over the ink blended background. Having lined up the stamp on the panel in the misty, I then made sure the panel was fully dry before stamping. The moisture from the Distress Oxides could easily cause embossing powder to stick everywhere and so I dried the panel thoroughly with a heat tool before treating it with an anti-static powder bag. This will again help prevent embossing powder randomly sticking everywhere. I stamped the image in clear embossing ink from Samsis Stamp. This is a clear sticky ink that the embossing powder will easily stick to and I made sure to press down firmly over the whole of the image to get a good impression. Having said that, I am not actually using the whole of the image. The centre cut heart background stamp has a central heart area which can be removed and I chose to stamp the image without the centre heart as I have plans to die cut this area afterwards. Having stamped the image I sprinkled white embossing powder from Samsis Stamp over the sticky ink and then heat set it with a preheated heat tool. I let the embossing powder cool and then trim the panel to just slightly smaller than an A2 card base. Now let's return to that centre heart area. A recently released Deco Heart die coordinates with this stamp set. There are two dies in the set, one which will cut out the heart area and one which will cut out a decorative matching pattern. You could cut the pattern from the open area of the stamp design, however I chose to cut the whole area out with one die and then die cut the decorative die from white card to add to the middle of the heart window. I added foam adhesive to the back of the ink blended panel and mounted it onto a white A2 card cut and scored from Nina Solar White card in the £110 weight. I added little dots of Gina K Connect glue over the back of the decorative die cut and then dabbed any excess glue off on a scrap piece of card before adding it to the heart window. I love how on the white card base the white decorative die cut adds a lovely tone on tone detail and elegance. I'm still in love with simple skinny strips for a sentiment banner and so I chose the Simple Sentiments 2 set from CZ Design and Simsa Stamp for the greeting. I often like to use a dark grey card for a sentiment strip but with the black soot distress oxide ink in this blend I felt that a black sentiment strip would work better. 
I treated a piece of black card with an anti-static powder bag and then stamped the birthday wishes greeting in clear embossing ink before sprinkling with white embossing powder and heat setting. I trimmed the sentiment to a skinny banner with a scalpel and ruler and then added foam adhesive to the back and used a T-square ruler to ensure I added it on straight to the card. I can't finish a card without a little sparkle and so I chose some opalescent sequins from the Butterfly Kisses sequin pack and a few clear sequins from the Girl's Best Friend sequin pack, both from Simsa Stamp, and kept them in place with Gina K Connect glue. And that completes this card with beautiful muted blended distress oxide background based on the series by Christina Werner. On the Simsa Stamp blog you will find a coordinating blog post as well as details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at limedudadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.